Hello, welcome to our lesson 1.3 on, on uh, solving word problems. So last class we worked on solving equations. This class we're going to work on solving word problems. We're going to do uh, about two lessons in on word problems, uh, one after this one, uh, where we kind of ramp up in difficulty. But this first day shouldn't be that scary or nasty. Okay. Now, for doing word problems, I've seen many articles on ways to describe to teach this and how to do it. And I've come up with my own kind of steps for doing word problems. <clears throat> um, uh, some of these steps here. Why don't I actually make this less less overwhelming by just showing uh, what color? That looks nice. But just showing one step at a time, and we'll talk through them. Well, most most people I find just skim word problems and don't jump right in, and that's like the first place where they make a mistake. Word problems sometimes have a lot of weird information in them. And, the, and the, the first thing we need to do is read it and reread it and read it again to make sure we understand what the situation is and what what exactly is, is happening and going on. Okay, So here, um, understand the word problem. I'll go ahead and tell you, I have dyslexia and sometimes my mind wanders and reading is probably one of my most largest struggles in life, or at least used to be. So I typically read a word problem at least three times. One time through I read it just to read it and ignore all the numbers just to try to soak in the meaning. The next time through I try to pick out what the meaning is of each little each little number and then I try to read it again with the idea of putting it together into some sort of mathematical idea. The next thing we're going to do to help us start the math, because a lot of people read it and they're like, now what? I don't know what to do next. Well the first thing we're going to do is after reading it, define a variable. Just tell me, what is the problem asking you to find? And we'll let that be our x, or whatever letter you want to use. We'll say, let x be how many cakes you ate, or the price of gas, or whatever they are asking you to find. And that kind of gives you a goal or an endpoint that, oh, I'm just trying to find this thing, and directs us in a much nicer uh, direction. Now, here's the actual work part, or the hard part. The thing that makes it a word problem is, we need to write an equation from all the stuff that we know. From understanding our problem and from having a variable, there should be some equation that we can write. We should be able to put into some sort of math what we are looking at. Now, once we do that, we have an equation to solve. And this is the easy part. That's what we did last lesson was solving equations. And then I have to stress this last point. <clears throat> so you solve the equation. Make sure you actually go back and answer the question. Some people are so excited they don't realize that the question may be kind of a twist on the x or a little bit different or or it might usually in most of our word problems it's the same thing but actually like write down your answer. Don't just don't just leave it with x is 2. Well what is x? x is the number of hours that you know you spent here or something. Whatever the question asks. Well uh, go ahead and answer the question. Okay. Um, so uh, one other thing before we start is most of these word problems, or really all of these that we're going to focus on today, are going to be uh, linear word problems, okay? So I want to talk about parts of a linear equation. So linear equations are typically kind of made up of three pieces here. There's uh, an x term, added or subtracted to it is a plain number term, and then that's equal to the kind of the total or whatever we're, you know, equal to another number. And so when you look at these things, let's get my pen ready here, um... The number with the x is, is something that's happening over and over and over again. It's multiplying by the x. And this is this is like in word problems, we can be hinted to by words like per, like per hour or per miles per hour or um, per month. Or we might, you know, th that hints us to this thing is it's something that's happening over and over again or recurring over and over again. So if you're selling Girl Scout cookies at $2 per box, Every box you sell gets you two dollars, or if you're 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 driving a car and being charged two dollars per mile, every mile you're driven is charging you two dollars. So this is the piece that'll be multiplied by our variable, and this thing is is some kind of initial or starting or basic kind of. If I drove no miles but I borrowed this car, someone's charging me four dollars just to borrow it, okay? Or if I decided to to um. To just look at the, or this would be weird, but if, if it were $2 for a box, but $4 just to place an order, no matter how many boxes you buy, you're going to pay $4. And then it's $2 per box. And then this is kind of the total. That's that's what things are equal to, okay? So this is kind of like an initial or starting point, like a starting amount. And this is a, a kind of a rate. 
something that's going to be changing as things go. So we have a rate and a starting amount. Um, you'll see how these apply in a few examples. The next example will have just a piece of this, a rate. We won't have a starting amount, but <clears throat> that kind of can guide us through trying to, uh, that'll help us a bit when trying to write these equations. So let's jump right into examples, and we'll try to do our good five steps here. And step one was to read and reread and make sure we understand it. So I'll, I'll read it to you. Um, your part-time job pays $8 an hour. If your last week's pay was $96, how many hours did you work? All right, let's reread it again. I just read it to give you the context. The context is, okay, so you have a job, you make some money. If you knew how much money you made, could you figure out how many hours you worked? We're going to pretend taxes don't exist, so this is an easier problem. So let's read it again. So your part-time job pays $8. So let's maybe start underlining important pieces of information. You make $8 an hour. Your last week's pay was 96 So your paycheck was $96. And we're quite curious about how many hours you worked. Okay, so I think we've read it and understood it. The next thing in our step is to define a variable. So we're going to let x equal something. We are choosing this, not anybody else. We're the ones solving this problem. We're going to let x be, or you could use p for pay or whatever, or I guess it's h for hours. We're asking about hours. We're going to let x equal something. Well, what's the question? How many hours? So let's let x be the number of hours you worked. Hours worked. Okay, so we have understood the question. We have defined a variable. Now let's use our understanding in our variable to write an equation. Well, let's see. Um, well, I know what the total is. You got $96 total. What is making up your pay? It looks like the only other piece of information I have is you get $8 per hour, right? Um, there's no starting amount. Like they don't just pay you for showing up to work. They pay you for each hour you work. So it must just be the rate part. $8 times X. So $8 times the number of hours you work. How many hours you work? I don't know. But I do know that, um, <clears throat> X stands for hours worked. And so, ah, okay. That, that, that looks okay. I think I can handle that. Okay. So now... We have written an equation. The next step is to solve our equation, and this is really easy to solve. It's just 8 times x, so I need to divide both sides by 8. And x will give us 12. Okay, so we found, we solved our equation. Now we need to answer it, and the question is, how many hours did you work? Um, you worked 12 hours last week, okay? Okay, was that so bad and scary? So many people are intimidated by word problems. Um, but when you really break it down into, like, these five steps, it's not that overwhelming. Read it, understand it, make a variable. That's just going to be whatever question they're asking you. What are you trying to find? And then the hard part's writing the equation. But then from there, you know how to solve, and we should be able to answer. Let's look at another example. You're moving, and you need to rent a moving truck. So you find a company that will rent a truck to you for $250 plus $2 per mile driven. If you end up paying $300.84, again, we're going to pretend there's no taxes, how many miles did you drive? All right, so we read it once. Let's read it at least to understand a little bit more and underline our important pieces of information. You're renting a truck. Okay, that makes sense. And you're going to pay, it looks like, some amount just to have it and then some amount per mile. So 250 just to have it and then $2 per mile. Okay, I think I see which one is the starting amount. This is must, This is the starting amount. And this one looks like the rate. Okay, I think I know where they go in the equations. If you end up paying 340, so that must be the total. Okay, I think I got this. How many miles did you drive? Okay, so I got all the pieces of information. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to define x. Let x equal, what's the question? How many miles you drove? So this is, x is going to be the number of miles we drove. Miles driven. Nice. So let's see if we can now write an equation. All right, well, I think I see the rate part. $2 per each mile, so $2 times the number of miles. Well, I don't know how many miles I drove, but... That's what I'm trying to find. I'm calling that x. So 2 times x plus, and there was some starting amount they charged me, 250. 
So 2x plus 250. And I know the total. The total I paid is 384. Okay, that's not too bad. I think writing the equation is the hard part. Um, so that's, that's, that's good. I got the equation. So now I'm on to the easy part. And all I need to do is solve this equation. Okay, so uh, it's already simplified. X's are on the same side. Let's just start solving. And so I can subtract 250 from both sides. Now you may want a calculator to do 384 minus 250. 384 minus 250 is 134. Okay, and then we're almost there. Now I just need to divide by 2 on both sides. Okay, and if you divide that by 2, that, what is it, 134 divided by 2, that'll give you 67. Okay, so, oh yeah, I found X. That wasn't too hard, but there's one more step. Got to answer the question. How many miles did you drive? We drove 67 miles. Nice. That wasn't really all that hard, was it? <clears throat> Word problems aren't that scary. Let's do one more, and then I'll call that a day for this lesson. Okay, one more. So last month, you started a new job selling cars. You're a car salesman. You get a base salary each month of $1,500, and you are paid an additional $200 for each car you sell. If your monthly pay was $3,900, how many cars did you sell? Okay, so this is what's called like working on commission, where most of your pay is based off, or some of your pay is based off of selling something. Okay, so you do have to get some sort of base salary in case you don't sell anything. Otherwise, you wouldn't be making any money. But this is how it works. So let's see. Let's read it one more time. So you you got a new job selling cars. You get a base salary. So this is a base salary each month of 1500 That kind of sounds like what you start with each month, a starting amount. And you're paid an additional 200 for each car that you sell. So that, that's a rate, isn't it? That's per each car you get $200. If your monthly total was $39, oh, there's, there's our total. How many cars did you sell? So once again, we'll start by defining a variable. So I'm going to let x be... I'll click off of that get that box out of the way. x is the number of cars sold. So cars sold. I'm okay if you're lazy with the amount of writing you do here, but just make sure you understand what your x stands for. So let's see if we can write an equation then. So my equation is, uh, let's see, I'll probably have some rate times x times x. Oh yeah, 200 times each car. Each car is an x. So 200x plus, and then I get some sort of starting amount, right? 1,500. So plus 1,500. And that's going to equal whatever my total was. Oh, my total was 3,900 or 3,900. Now I think I feel pretty good about this. I think I should be able to solve this and, and find x, and that should tell me how many cars I sold. Okay, so I'm going to want to subtract 1,500 from both sides. Okay, 200x is equal to, and so now once again, if you need a calculator for these things to do 3,900 minus 1,500, don't, don't be like ashamed or scared. It's okay to grab a calculator, and that'll give us, if you do that, that'll be 2,400. All right. And then we'll just need to divide by 200. Divide by 200. And once again, if you need to reach for a calculator to do 2,400 divided by 2, that's fine, but that's going to end up being 12. So x equals 12. So now we need to answer the question. It's how many cars did you sell? <clears throat> X was number of cars sold, so we sold 12. So 12 cars sold. And there's our final answer. Okay. Well, that's all I have for you right now. Um, I'll catch you next time as we dive a little deeper into maybe some more involved word problems. But hopefully this is a good start to make you kind of feel happy about it.